Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to show you my process for learning anything in computer science. So let's say that you want to learn something new like, for example, the Java language, C++, or maybe something specific like a library, um, a new language feature, anything like that. This is my process for learning that thing and then committing it to memory. So of course this depends on who you are. Some people have different learning uh, processes for learning different things. Um, and some people just, their brains work differently, so they learn in a different way. For example, um, I never really take notes until recently, especially in school. I never take notes. I just watch the videos or the slides and I just remember it or try to or read the book. That's what I do. But I, I never take notes because I know I'll never go back and read them. Um, but that works for a lot of people. Um, and it helps them out when learning. So that's just one example of like, you don't want to follow exactly what I say in this video, but I'm going to show you today um, a lot of the things that I've learned and hopefully you can use this to help you out in your computer science career. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is research. Uh, that's the most obvious thing. So these are the essential resources that I always draw from when I'm learning something new. So some are more important than others. For example, Google. Google is essential for learning new things. You can Google anything in the world and you'll likely find some information on it. So let's say that you want to learn how to find um, or you want to learn Java. All you got to do is search up Java tutorials and you'll have plenty of Java tutorials to go through. And so Google is going to have most of your information and Google leads to these other things anyway. So that's why it's blue. It's just a, a way for you to access information easily, obviously. But some people don't even think about that. As a programmer, don't be afraid to Google things you don't know. It'll help you out, you know, you know, no matter what stage you are in your career, okay? And uh, so another essential thing is the official documentation in Wikipedia or tutorials of a, uh, of a library or a language or something like that, whatever you're learning. If there's official documentation, then make sure you try and read it um, since it's coming straight from the source. Um, it'll have the most uh, correct information and sometimes more detailed information than the, than the other sources because those are secondary sources compared to, I would call this a primary source. But sometimes the official documentation or tutorials are not as good. And sometimes you just have to deal with that and then rely on other sources that other people have made. So um, my favorite source, I would say, are probably books and articles on the interwebs. So every time I'm learning something new, like a new language or something like that, or anything I look at books and my favorite websites for books is manning.com I think and it's called manning and then a press are they both have really good books and uh, I recommend using those and you can find a lot of cool stuff and then of course articles I got to do search for what you're trying to learn and then you'll have plenty of blogs and tutorials uh, written up for you to read from those are very good and finally I for me at least this is kind of ironic because I make YouTube videos and I try to help people learn a new stuff but videos are actually my last source that I draw from um, it's the last thing I look for because a lot of people are not very good at tutorials um, I like to think I'm good but uh, some people are just are not detailed at what they're doing and so when I watch a tutorial they're leaving out tons of detail um, and they're just not good at explaining it usually so that's my last source um, for learning new information so Udemy though Udemy.com has a lot of good tutorials I recommend so Make sure to check that out because uh, a lot of people use those uh, courses. And then, of course, YouTube. Everyone knows YouTube. But anyway, those are my resources that I recommend that you draw from. Whenever you're learning something new, just go through each of these and grab up all the information that you can get. So, of course, take notes um, as you're doing this so you can come back to it later. I, use, I usually use a, uh, a tablet. I just got a new tablet. It's a Samsung uh, S7 Plus tablet thingy. I don't know. But uh, it's pretty cool. You can draw on it and uh, write down all your notes. That's what I did for this video and my upcoming videos. So I recommend getting something like that if that'll help you out. Or you can just do it on paper. It doesn't really matter as long as you remember the information that you're learning. And yeah. Okay, let's move to the next slide. So where can I get books? Um, some people don't have money to spend on books. Obviously, books are a little expensive, especially when you're buying many of them to draw from many sources like I recommend doing. So I don't recommend or encourage or, uh, yeah, encourage pirating, but there are some sites that um, you can use to obtain an ebook, e generally speaking. So just for educational purposes, of course, you can use libgen.is. They have a lot of books. 
And then um, one of my new favorites is b-ok.cc. That's a really good source for obtaining eBooks. So do with that information as you wish. So here are some more tips for researching a new thing. So take notes on a medium you will actually go back and look at. I talked a little bit about this a second ago. So I like to use a tablet now because I can uh, easily, like when I write down notes on paper, it just, I don't like it. For, I don't know, it just doesn't work well with me. It's just my brain doesn't like it. So I don't actually go back and use them ever and I feel bad when I do it. So when I use a tablet here for taking notes, I'm actually looking at it right now. So I can uh, look at them at any time and uh, use them. So that's just what I recommend. Use a medium that you'll actually go back and look at so that you're not taking notes for no reason. So seek to understand everything on every level. Don't stop until you truly know even the most intricate and trivial inner workings. Detail is important. So if you're not, if you're really passionate about computer science, um, you'll strive to learn every single detail of something um, when you're learning it. At least that's how I like to see things. Um, some people, they just go through college and they just learn what they learn in their classes, but they don't actually learn outside of school. They don't really seek to understand. They just learn to get a grade. And those people are not really going to be successful in the computer science industry. Um, I would, I don't think, in my opinion, because they don't really seek to learn and understand and all that stuff. So you're not really learning per se. You're just remembering and just going with the flow. It's not really something that you should do if you're passionate about something. But anyway, the best way to learn something is to actually understand it on a fundamental level. So always ask questions about something. So let's say that you're learning about Java reference variables. You need to understand well, you don't need to, but I'm always asking questions in my head when I'm learning new things because I'm just, you need to be hungry for information and to learn um, because that's just, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, hopefully that helps. But um, but anyway, read many different sources. This one's really important. Read many different sources that you pick up information left out by one. One article will often leave out information that others contain. Same for other resources like books. So yeah, let's say that you're reading an article and you're learning about um, how to how to unclog your toilet. This article may tell you about plungers, but it won't tell you about some other thing that you can do to unclog your toilet. That's a really bad example, but the point is, is that not every uh, tutorial is going to have all the detail that you need to fully understand something. So that if you if you really are hungry for information, you should read from many different sources that, so that you get all of that information and soak it in, because it's just it's just what it is like not everything is going to be contained in one article one book one video uh stuff like that um so for example when i was learning about java records from my last video um a bunch of the articles um were missing a lot of information so i kept having to look up articles and read them and finally i found i think all the information i needed and that left me with like four or five different articles that i had to use to work make the video and make the tutorial for you guys so if you're going to be thorough, I recommend just being thorough is what I'm trying to say. So um, draw from many different sources, articles, books, uh, and so on, videos too. Okay. So some other supplemental resources while uh, researching is our Discord. There's a link for this in the description below. So you can hit the link and then join our Discord. It's essentially um, a big community where you can ask for help. You can get some friends, talk about, you know, computer science and other stuff. But more importantly, there's a help. There's a bunch of help channels for each language and stuff like that and libraries so that if you're needing help or you're stuck on something specific, you can ask for it and someone will try and help you usually. So we have a really big community and a lot of helpful people if you want to ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And also we have the resources channel in our Discord. So in that channel, I've left a bunch of books and courses that I've read and watched myself and I highly recommend them because they do contain a lot of detail and I found them to be, you know, satisfactory. So um, if you're looking for some recommendations, those that channel is where you can find them. And of course, my videos, you know, of course, you got to watch my videos and hit that like button. Uh, you can find lots of, uh, I like to think you can find lots of detail in my videos. So um, that's another resource you can draw from. And then one day we're going to have our own Cortex website. I'm excited for that. It's, uh, it's in the works right now. I haven't had a lot of time to work on it, but you know, it's a one man show right now. So um, it's going to be like a blog. It's going to be like a, a forum, a bunch of stuff. So stay tuned for that and practice. So this is the second element of learning new stuff in computer science practice. So tips for practicing a new thing. 
Soon after or during the soaking up of all this information, you know, researching, open your integrated development environment like IntelliJ if you're learning, if you're doing Java and start practicing and typing out the new things that you are learning so um, that you don't lose the information when you're actually learning. You want to keep that information. So actually uh, typing out what you are doing as if you're making a tutorial will uh, hopefully help you consolidate the information in your mind. And so that takes us to our second point though, pretend as if you are making a tutorial for someone else. If you can explain something well, you actually understand it. So pretend that, yeah, just pretend that you're making a tutorial for someone else, code out the full project with everything that you learn, like I usually do ahead of time. Well, you, you may not know this, but what I do before each of my videos is I record, I mean, I uh, code out everything that I'm gonna teach in that video so that I have a template of everything that I do wanna teach, but I also explain it with comments. So I explain it, I show it, and then in my mind, I have, an, I, I have an idea of what I need to know and what I do know. And during that process, I've learned again what uh, I'm about to be showing y'all. So it just solidifies what I'm trying to learn. And I find it a helpful tool, even if you're not you know, gonna make a t tutorial about something, always practice. That's just the most important concept here. So uh, implement the new things you learn into a real project. This is very similar. So just put it into practice. Go to one of your real projects or make a new real project and just, you know, use what you learned. That's as simple as that, so that you can uh, solidify what you learned. And as for solidification, as my priest used to say, practice makes permanence or practice makes uh, perfect. Same thing. Um, the more you practice, the more you're gonna remember it and solidify it within your brain, okay? Don't forget that. So other methods and tips for learning, come up with a big project and just go for it. This is something that I've done over the summers. Um, just choose something that you wanna do, for example, a website. And let's say that this website, uh, if you plan it out in your head, but there's a lot of stuff you don't know, like how to work with a MongoDB database or how to transfer data across um, a REST API. Um, let's say you don't know those things, but along the way, you can teach yourself those things just by suffering and going through it. You don't need to learn everything one by one and then do the project. You can do that, but I think a most effect, I think a more effective way is just to sometimes throw yourself into the deep end and just learn uh, along the way. And then you can pick up information, learn tips and tricks, and then finally solidify what you're learning later on. Um, that's what I recommend. That's another thing you can do. Just sometimes choose a big project and go for it. And then along the way, you're going to learn what you need to learn. So teach someone else. I found this very helpful during my last semester of college. My friend was in my math class and uh, he needed some help understanding some stuff. So we would call and I would draw stuff on the screen. I would explain the concepts of calculus to him. And during that process, I would learn it better myself actually, because you start to ask yourself questions, start to ask yourself, do I really understand this? And how can I explain this in a better way? And as you're doing that, you just understand it better yourself. So I like to say you're bouncing ideas off their forehead. So that's, yeah. Anyway, so ask for help if you need it. That's another essential one. Don't be, don't be like a know-it-all. Just be humble and, you know, ask for help if you need it. Don't be afraid to ask for help because there's so many people willing to help you, especially in our Discord channel um, or server like I told you about. Just ask for help. Really simple. Okay, things to avoid. Um, these are things that you should not do. Do not overload yourself. Choose a few things to learn and then put all of your focus and attention on that. This one is one that I should listen to myself. It's really something that I struggle with. I have like basically a disease in my head where I just choose a bunch of things that I want to learn and I try learning them all at once, but I just overload myself so I don't really learn much over that period of time. So limit yourself to a few things and then put all your focus into that. So for example, this summer, I recommend you come up with a goal of, of all the things that you want to learn and just learn all those things one by one or two at a time, just not too much is the point. You don't want to do too many things at a time. Um, you're going to overload your CPU, okay? Just don't do that. And don't be a know-it-all. I kind of said this a second ago. Know-it-alls are really annoying. Everyone knows that. But sometimes even if you know that, you become a know-it-all and that's not cool. You need to be humble and admit to yourself and others what you don't know. Always be hungry to learn. Very often I see that the people who claim to be know-it-alls are the people who don't really know that much at all. They're just making up for it with their loud mouth. So beware of those people and don't be one of those people, okay? Don't be afraid to try bold things and refactor your code. That's a big one. So let's say that you have a big project and you learned a new a bunch of new things over the summer. Don't be afraid to implement those new things into your project to make the project better and work better. Because like I said before, you should implement what you learn into your projects to solidify what you're learning, but also 
um, it'll help you out in the long run because you learn some new stuff and you should implement those into your project to make the project better. And finally, videos or courses titled Learn X and Y Hours. Avoid those videos because those usually lack a lot of detail. They're just trying to catch you and get views. They're not about actually teaching you, taking the time to teach you about something. And you know, maybe there are some good ones out there, but I just I just hate seeing that, that there's videos where it's like, learn how to, uh, learn how to, you know, wipe your butt in 20 hours. Like, no, you're gonna need to learn how to wipe your butt over many, 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 many years, okay? I'm still learning how to wipe my butt, guys. It's, it's tough out here on these streets. Anyway, um, I think I just lost, you know, viewers, but they lack detail and you should take the time to learn something if you actually want to commit and learn something and you're passionate about it. Okay. Okay. So this one's a little off topic, but it's kind of related to learning something because sometimes you can get burned out and you don't want to learn anymore or you don't feel like you're learning much. So these are a few of my sources of motivation that you could maybe get into. Music. Music is my favorite for sure. If I'm listening to Eminem and I'm programming, I'm in my zone. I have entered flow state for sure. And um, if you're just generally speaking out of motivation, like your life, you feel like your life sucks and you have no motivation to get out of bed, I do recommend reading Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. It's not just, you know, some silly old self-help book. It's more of like a uh, bi an autobiography and it's about his life and how he changed his life and how he became a Navy SEAL and how he's a badass. And it sounds maybe a little corny, but a lot of people say that, but it's just really fucking good. It's a top seller. It's my favorite book of all time. It really just changed my thinking in life. Like I say that without any exaggeration. It's just the best book I've ever read. And I highly recommend you get that book. There's an audio book too. And uh, yeah, check it out. I highly recommend getting that. Take a step away. Breaks are important to cons consolidate information. I think this is scientifically proven. You know, I'm not going to back it up with sources or anything like that. But I've heard that um, when you're learning something, taking breaks can help you, you know, commit that to your long-term memory. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but it sounds about right. So also, um, and, and so this includes, you know, showers. I, I, I do some of my best thinking while I'm in the shower, by the way. Like a morning shower, you just, man, I think about just life and the universe and the complexities of the physics and shit like that so yeah and then walks outside and sleeping uh sleeping is a big one i think for consolidating information to long-term memory make sure you do all of that just take care of yourself and then of course podcasts are a big one for me the joe rogan podcast i really like you can learn lots of new things every single day and then theo vaughn is a cool guy he has a podcast called this past weekend i think uh i recommend it and then uh, females, you know, find just someone in your life who can make you happy or men if you're gay or a girl. If There's not many girls who watch my videos, so I said females primarily. But um, yeah, find someone who makes you happy and they'll, they'll find someone who actually likes what you're, in, you're, what you're into. Or at the, even if they're not in, into computer science, they still support you and want you to strive to be better in computer science. So find someone like that and they will make you uh, more motivated, I found at least. Okay. Okie dokie. So another thing, problem solving strats or, uh, strat strategies, uh, <laughs> take breaks. I said this before, but it's worth repeating again. Take lots of breaks, you know, every hour or every two hours, just get up and walk around, go outside, go bust a nut, whatever you need to do. Excuse my, uh, language, but just take a break. Simple as that. And then sleep, eat, take care of your body. You need to take care of your body. And that'll help you learn. Um, the more you take care of your body, the more your body is willing to learn. I, I, I've heard. And so when I'm sleepy, I don't really learn as much and I don't feel like learning. And when I'm hungry, I get angry, I get hangry. So those are just some basics that you should cover. And don't be afraid to ask for help. I said this before, but again, it's worth repeating again. Do not be afraid to ask for help. If you're really stuck on something, Go into a help channel. Go onto Stack Overflow. Well, I don't recommend Stack Overflow. They're really toxic. Go somewhere and ask for help is the point. Ask for help. They will help you, maybe. Um, so don't be afraid to ask for help. Uh, but yeah, I, I just remember something. On the first point, taking a break, I found that a lot of the time, if I just step away from a problem that I've been working on for a few hours, I'll come back to it and I'll solve it immediately. It's the craziest thing. I'll just suddenly have an epiphany and solve it immediately. So that's why breaks are also really important to solving shiz, and that includes sleep, of course. 
And uh, another thing is work out, taking care of your body, working out. You know, I just worked out today. When I got back, I felt really good. I was like, okay, I'm going to record a video. Um, I feel really good. I'm sore. Soreness feels good. Um, so it just, I recommend it. A lot of people recommend it as well. So work out, do some running, uh, lift some weights, whatever you want to do. Just get fit, feel good about yourself. It's about feeling good about yourself too. That's a really big thing. It's like a placebo essentially. Um, get those hormones running in your brain. And yeah, just be healthy and have a nice and clean workspace around you as well. Have a good desk. Have your desk nice and clean so that you feel good about where you're working and just feel good overall. Okay, that's going to help you overall. Not just for sol- not just for solving problems, but just uh, in programming in general and learning and stuff like that. So that's it. I hope this helps. Anything you want to add, drop a comment below. And uh, hopefully I didn't leave anything out, but I'm sure you guys can come up with some good stuff to add to this presentation so make sure you drop it below okay as a bonus i just wanted to show you guys how i uh, learned well how i researched and learned the details for my last video the records video so all i did is just did java well i knew some prerequisite information i knew records came out on java 14 so i did well first of all i did java records tutorial and then there's just plenty of articles you can read to understand it here's one here's one i used this one's really good uh, Jankov, generally speaking, has really good tutorials on lots of stuff. I recommend Jankov very much. So he has a lot of information here. He is missing some information, though. It's kind of a short article, so it doesn't have a lot of information. So that's why you just got to keep going, keep going. And uh, here's some more stuff. Uh, Oracle, their official documentation is really good, actually, on Java Records. So that's the official documentation. Oh, look, <laughs> my own video. What the heck? That is so cool. My own video is here. That makes me so happy. That's crazy. Okay, and then uh, I just kept looking. That's all I did. And so as I was doing that, though, um, well, actually, I just read it. I just read all the articles I wanted to find. And then I saved those articles. And then I came back to them. And uh, I wrote them. I wrote all the, the links for them on my uh, tablet here, on my notes. And then I uh, went back to each article and started taking information from each of them and just writing them down on my uh, tablet and then just consolidated all the information into one article of my own. And then from that, I did I did the practice part of the learning process. So I went into IntelliJ and just planned out the entire video with all the information I learned. And then I recorded it. So I made the tutorial. But as I was recording the tutorial, I was also reading from my tablet because there's some information you just can't transfer from your tablet to, or your you know medium of uh, note taking to your IDE. So it's just a lot of stuff combined, but that's generally speaking my process for learning new things uh, nowadays. So I hope that, I hope that really helped. Um, that's just my process. Of course, again, I'll just repeat this. Um, other people have different processes for learning, processes for learning. So this is not like a, you know, solidified thing where you have to follow this, but I've developed this over the past few years and I just hope you guys enjoy and I hope it helps. So, yeah. So, yeah, thanks for watching. If you want to support this channel, then click the join button below and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month. And you can cancel at any time. This will help the channel keep going and help me support me. You can even donate $5 or $10, however much you want. And uh, you get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, including this one here. You get a new rank on my Discord server so you can, you know, show everyone how swaggy and cool you are. And then, of course, you can see your name on the screen like you see right now at the end of every video. So if you like that, make sure to join. If you can't, then it's okay. I just appreciate you watching this video anyway. So that's pretty much it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.